Welcome back city builders. This is Hubbub in the city of Nouveau Springs on the Azure Gulf map in the Sunset Harbor DLC. This is video seven, I believe in this series. The first six videos, I was very much focused on building out all of the suburbs and parks and beautification. You can see we still have quite a bit of work to do. We have a university to finish filling out. We have a zoo to put in. Um, I have a science campus up on the top of this hill up here. All of this has happened off camera. Uh, but the next several videos, I really want to work on industry. So uh, I have been doing some infrastructure work to fill in the highway network and people mover network in order to f develop uh, oil and ore extraction over here, but then to build out unique factories in here. But before we start, very quickly, the time lapse that you saw at the beginning of the video was kind of fleshing out the history of these industry districts, which I think I first loaded in in May and didn't really fully finish detailing until I think late September, early October. So this park I called Industry Dial-Up because this is 100% generic old school industry. I have not even upgraded this to 4.0. You can see when we look at the factories that we've hired over educated workers. Um, so part of my thinking here in this zone was to keep uh, one thinking that mm, lower tech industry would provide goods for lower density commercial. I'm not 100% certain on that, but that's part of the thinking there. And then the other thinking is uh, provide jobs for undereducated workers. But then similarly, as the city land values continue to appreciate and commercial levels up to level five density, I need to be able to be producing higher tech industry so this park here is industrial park 4.0 applying the 4.0 option and then theoretically these buildings you can see now that building that's an office building let's see the industry buildings in here are hiring well educated and higher educated so migrating upward the tech level of these industries so that i could keep higher level workers employed uh, but then the tricky thing is is the reality is I'm still importing a whole lot of goods and I'm exporting a whole lot of forestry. My forestry industry from the DLC is built out really well. Um, you can see I am, I am importing, but I'm actually exporting significantly more than I import, twice as much as I import in forests. So that's the slack in the supply chain that's caused by my storage facilities and You'll see a similar picture if you look at my forestry. Uh, in the same way, I'm outputting twice as much. So yes, I am importing, but I'm importing because I have significant warehouse capacity put in place. For example, here we have the furniture factory using plain timber and paper. And right next door, we have plain timber, unique factory products, that's to pick up goods from the factory and then paper here. So um, trying to keep enough slack in the chain. What that looks like in the budget is sometimes you'll see in my budget, the industry lines for those two industries will go negative, but the warehouse line will always be significantly positive. Whatever simoleons appear to be lost in importation of goods is made up for in exportation through the storage facilities. Now off camera, I did a lot of work with the highway network. I have to say my three favorite creators right now are Flux, Strict Toaster, and Biffa. Uh, and Biffa is the, the creator that I got this idea from. I, one of his T-Port videos, he did this really cool little trick where he took a regular six or four lane road and converted it into a highway using TMPE to upgrade the mile per hour limits, which is what I'm doing here, but I'm also adding 
monorail on this highway so that I can create easy accessibility by Sims into these uh, resource extraction zones. I also thought I'd uh, mix it up a little bit and I pulled these kind of futuristic arcologies from the workshop. This is a this is a callback to the old heyday of SimCity when you would your end game you'd be building arcologies for your city to blast off into space with. One of my favorite favorite aspects of SimCity when I played it back in the 90s. Uh, but then the other reason I'm moving these in is for kind of high tech uh, housing for workers in these zones. Um, I've already got some monorail lines running. So these residents are not lonely out here. They can get into the city for commercial if they need it or for entertainment if they need it. Okay, and so where we're heading with all of this over the next several videos will be extracting resources from the ore and the oil fields that we have out here. And then I think what I want to do is use this big flat plateau for the uh, refinement of raw resources into special goods. And then I'm going to put in a, ray, a couple of rail carbo hu cargo hubs in this section so that we can quickly move those extracted special goods, extracted and refined special goods down to unique factories that we'll lay out down here. Uh, that's the grand game plan. My and so the background research that I did involved viewing several videos from other Skylines creators that were uh, building open mining pits. Uh, those weren't completely satisfactory because they were on flat geography. So I also looked at some mountain operations. This first one is Eagle Mountain in California. The second one is Bingham Canyon Mine. And then the third coming up is Ersberg Osvaldi Central Mining Operation. Um, and so my goal is to try to replicate this terraced look. I probably won't have any significantly huge assets in this, mostly underground mines. And what I want to focus on this video is building out an ore extraction center here. You can see I already have some buildings put down. I actually set it up and then tore it down so that I could at the very least get up to level two. And the reason is this. Um, there's a playlist that I'll put in the description of this video that includes four videos I looked at from other creators to get some ideas. Uh, so, and I'll list those creators in the description as well to get some ideas for how to create a, a kind of a cool, realistic lo looking mining area. Um, and then I did some research online because one of the things about those videos is they're all flat open pit mining, whereas what I have going on here is mountain mining. So I wanted to level this up far enough that I could have access to the small or underground mine. Uh, so that's what I want to work on for the rest of this video. One little tricky thing I've discovered is that these uh, underground mines actually have bigger footprints than I realized. So I'm going to have to leave more space between my roads than I had initially planned. Um, we'll see what that looks like as we progress. So I want to start with a dirt road. I'm going to put on the terrain map so that I can try to stay with the terrain. We shall see how this works. And basically, I'm trying to get a road network through this entire basin here uh, on the side of this mountain. Okay, so if I can bring this over here and then do a quick turn around.
got this whole little spot in here that I haven't done anything with. It's nice and flat. So actually, we might be able to put some mines in there. Now, one of the things I was reading was about terracing. Um, so what I want to do is take the flat tool. I think that might be big enough. No, it might be too big there. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to try to tear these up. So I'm going to click on the road and try to push this as far back as I can. not bad <laughs> looks pretty good I think okay so let's see what do we have we need storage and we need let's see I don't think I don't know how much well now there's an idea actually let's see we have those may be too big small or mine now let's see what do these look like See, this flat space, a small ore mine might look nice right in there. Let's see. If I grab right here and bring it like this. And then I'm departing from my script. Let's see, 32 a week, 16 a week, 4,800 a week. So these are actually more expensive. Let's see, can we drop? Just for fun, let's drop that there. Then we'll come to the underground mines Now, here, here, we're going to need ore grinding mills and glass. I think I need to leave some empty capacity because I really have no idea uh, the demand that's going to be placed on production when I start putting in start putting in unique factories. So let's leave this here. What we've done is we have a pretty cool terraced terraced facility. Um, I might smooth that out. Push this back. Um, so we have a cool 
terraced facility here. Uh, plenty of room for expansion. And then I need to go work on specialty goods. Not specialty goods. Yeah, special special goods. Uh, extraction of special goods. We're close, very close to level three, which will open up some additional um, additional assets. Uh, no detailing as of yet. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, the next the next video in this whole section will be looking at special goods.